Have you ever wondered how some DJs just book weddings so easily? Well, my name is Nate Acosta, and today I'm gonna share with you how I took my DJ company from doing zero events to well over 200 a year. Today, I'm gonna give you three game-changing strategies that literally transformed my DJ career. And I'm gonna be honest with you because there's a lot of strategies out there that if I'm being blunt, just don't work. And I'm gonna be completely transparent with you guys because I've literally been there. I know what it's like not knowing if you're gonna be able to book another gig or having those slow months and trying to figure out, okay, well, what's next? So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what you can do, three things that you can do to transform your career in 2024. Let's get it. Number one, you gotta spread kindness. Now, hold up. Before you get on to me and be like, yo, Nate, being kind as a DJ in this cutthroat industry, well, let me break it down for you. As DJs, we're not just there to play music. We're literally there to curate experiences. And when you're kind to people, bro, it literally is going to give this ripple effect that I can't even explain. Because if you think about it, kindness is contagious. When you bring a positive energy and genuine kindness, it's just gonna help you. People are gonna feel comfortable, they're gonna feel connected, and guess what? They're gonna refer you more gigs. Exactly. And you know, if I'm being honest, in this industry, it's all about who you know. And that's just point blank, period. So if you're kind to people, especially the other vendors at your events, I can guarantee you that you are literally gonna open up so many doors for referrals. Let me, let me break it down for you. If you think about the hierarchy of booking weddings, right? Who gets booked first? Usually it's the venue, right? If you could get in close with a couple of venue owners, for instance, I have one venue owner that you know, I have a great relationship with them and they refer us probably close to 50 weddings a year at least. And I don't pay them a dime. The only reason they refer things to us, of course we provide a good service, but at the same time, we are extremely kind. We treat their venue like it was our own. So I know, shout out to my guy, Jason Jana. He actually made a topic about this um, not too long ago about going above and beyond at your events, whether that's cleaning up spills, uh, grabbing a drink for a bride and groom if they don't have something, or even like helping out the other vendors however they need it. I'm gonna give you guys another example right here. Just last week, I was DJing a wedding and they had a piano player. Well, unfortunately, the cable to his speaker, he forgot it, the one, the power cable. And he asked me, hey bro, do you have um, another cable that I could use to plug in the speaker? I said, of course, I ran down, even though I had already put the toolbox away and maybe it was a little inconvenience for me to go down there and grab it, I still went and did that. And then right after that happened, his mic stopped working for him to sing. So he's like, bro, I, and I could tell like, he was embarrassed. He, it, nobody wants to go through that. And he asked, hey man, you think I could just borrow your mic as well? I said, you know what, man, no problem. I don't have to use it during this time, so knock yourself out. I had one of my guys go over there, set it up for him. We kept the event going as smooth as possible. The couple never knew, nobody ever knew, except me and the piano player. And I say that because, guess what? If he comes across someone that needs a DJ in the future, I'm almost positive that he's probably gonna keep us in mind. And there we go, there's another referral that opens up for us. So that's what I'm saying, guys. When it comes to these weddings, we're all in this as a group effort. Be nice to people. If the photographer wants to hide their bags behind your DJ booth, so be it. As long as it's not, you know, killing your aesthetic and just a bunch of stuff back there, be nice. Let them hide it back there. There's nowhere else that they can really put it, right? Um, and that's what I'm saying. You gotta be kind. You gotta not just think about yourself at these events. You gotta think about the well-being of one, your clients and all the other vendors. Because like I said, DJs were usually one of the last ones to get booked. So if you can get in good with one of these other vendors, it's only gonna benefit you. So again, some actionable steps that you can take on how you can spread kindness, clean up spills, grab something to drink for your bride or groom, you know, send a wedding planner that you've worked with, right, and you wanna continue working with, send them a $25 Amazon, uh, Starbucks or Amazon gift card. Like, right, like, it doesn't hurt to be nice to people, man. And, you know, when, when special moments happen for them, send them a, a text or, or give them a phone call and keep those relationships building up because at the end of the day, man, it's all about who you know in this business. And if you're gonna be successful, you have to be nice to people. I'm gonna say it again, if you're gonna be successful, you have to be nice to people. All right, strategy number two, content is key. Now this one right here is super important, guys. I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again. If your content is good, 
you can literally charge whatever you want. Think about that again. If your content is good, you can literally charge whatever you want. And by saying your content has to be good, I don't mean that you need to go out and spend, you know, crazy amounts of money on cameras, on lighting, and all this other stuff, right? Because I know, you know, sometimes it could be overwhelming thinking, okay, well, yeah, I wanna create content, but I need this $5,000 camera. I need this, you know, all this crazy lighting. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, man, starting with something is better than not having anything. So your iPhone, right? These iPhones nowadays, this iPhone right here, this is a 13 and the camera's still pretty decent, right? Um, and that's what I'm saying. Start with what you have. Don't overcomplicate it and think that you need this whole big O production. If you look at big accounts out there right now, right? Guys like uh, Jack Christensen, you know, Justin the DJ, Eric Rhodes even, a lot of those guys, a lot of the content they're, that they're filming isn't highly produced, right? It isn't... I think a lot of it is done with either, with either a 360 camera or like a cell phone, and they're just creating content that they know works for them, which we're going to get into the next point in strategy number three. But what I'm trying to say to you guys, man, is just create stuff, right? Have fun with it. Don't overcomplicate it. If you know that your couples like to hear mixes of the early 2000s hits, set up your phone on a tripod right? Doesn't have to be anything fancy and record yourself at an event doing a blend, a transition, whatever the case may be. Because I think what happens a lot of the times is sometimes as DJs, we think, all right, well, what are these other DJs going to think? And, and I used to be in that same predicament, right? I was like, man, well, I don't know if I want to do this because people are going to think it's corny or people are going to, you know, think that that transition was dumb or that it was too simple. But let me tell you something that somebody told me. They said, look, man, we're not getting booked by other DJs to DJ their weddings. And that was like, damn, he's right, you know? And so when it comes to creating the content, think of stuff that your ideal couples want to see and create content around that, right? It doesn't have to be anything super crazy. If you go on Instagram, one of the things that I love to do is go find Instagram reels that are funny or maybe that, you know, they're doing really well number-wise and then think about, okay, maybe that, that reel was about barbering or doing nails or makeup. How can I take what they did and recreate it or put my spin on it to apply it to the DJ stuff, right? And that's how I create a lot of my reels. Another really useful tool that I use a lot is ChatGPT. Going on there, you can find you know, tons of videos here on YouTube about different prompts that you can use to give you ideas to create content. But literally the possibilities guys are endless. There's so much content that you can create. It doesn't have to be super complicated. Um, and even when it comes down to editing, right? I think that's another big thing that kind of keeps people from, from creating is okay, I recorded it, but how am I gonna edit it now? Well, let me give you guys some tips. CapCut is a great free tool that you can use if you don't want to invest a lot of money just yet and, get, and you know try it out. Um, or if you don't have the time, so I'm going to give you guys an example of what I did. I used to try to edit all my own stuff, and I did it for a while. I would watch YouTube videos and figure out stuff that I liked and you know recreate it. But it takes a while, especially when you're just starting off and you're kind of new to the program, trying to figure out where everything is, and it can be frustrating. What might be a 60 second reel could take you an hour, two hours to edit if you're just starting off. So let me give you guys a suggestion. There's a website called upwork.com and on Upwork, you can literally create a job posting and whether that job posting is for someone to edit your reels, right? So I actually went on there recently and I created a job posting for, hey, I need someone to edit all my Instagram reels. Um, you can set your own budget. So whatever your budget is, whether it's you know, $25 a video, $50 a video, $100 a video. You can set your own budget. The freelancers see the posting along with your budget and then they can apply to it. And then now you have a list of people that are willing to do the job for the budget that you set. Um, and you can kind of weed through and see what works best for you. So I actually found some editors. Shout out to the Dylan Twins. They are um, on Instagram. You can go follow them, the Dylan Twins. And they are now the ones who edit the majority of my reels. And they provide a great service. They're super fast. Um, the communication is very easy. So if you want someone to edit your reels, go over to their Instagram, hit them up, send them a DM, tell them that I sent you, and they may even cut you a deal. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Katie, you're going to have to talk to Katie, but uh, they could take care of you, man. Shout out to them, though. They're amazing at what they do. So there's some actionable steps for you guys. Like I said, man, don't overcomplicate it, right? Start with what you have. Uh, create stuff that you know your ideal couple would like to see. And who cares what other DJs think, man? And if you need to outsource it, 
You want to free up some of your time? Boom. There you go. You can outsource it. All right. So let's get on to strategy number three. Strategy number three, defining your ideal client. And I know this one kind of sounds a little cliche. When I first learned about this and trying to figure out who my ideal client was, I was like, okay, um, that all sounds great, but uh, how the hell do I go about figuring out who my ideal client is, right? I want everybody. I want all the clients. I want to book all the gigs. But the way someone broke it down to me was, think about the last 10 weddings that you DJed, and out of those 10, how many of them were your favorite? Was it three? Was it five? Was it four of them? How many of them were your favorite? And of the favorite ones, what did those have in common? Were they the same ethnicity? Were they the same age? Were they from the same area? Were they, you know, into the certain, t the same types of things? Did they have the same type of career? Whatever the case may be, think about those things. So I'm going to give you guys an example of the way I did it. So I thought about the last 10 weddings that I did. And I realized that the ones that were my favorite were ones where one of the two, one of the ones that was getting married was some type of Latino and the other one wasn't. So whether the bride was Mexican or Dominican or Colombian or Puerto Rican, and the groom was white, black, you know, Asian, whatever the case may be. So when I thought about it, right, I realized that in most cases, the couples, one of them was Latino and the other one wasn't. So whether the bride or groom was Mexican, Dominican, Puerto Rican, Colombian, whatever the case may be, and the other one was like white, black, Chinese, you know, whatever the case is. And I realized, okay, I like these type of events because I love Latin music. I grew up around it. I'm very comfortable playing it. Um, and I like being able to bounce between different genres, going from cumbia to hip hop to reggaeton to house to bachata, whatever the case may be, right? So I was like, all right, I know that the couples that I like working with are all bilingual or multicultural. So now I'm going to create content that really resonates with those people. So that's what I did. I started creating reels about how you can get both sides of your family on the dance floor at the same time. And I realized when I would speak to these couples that were inquiring about my services, one of their main concerns was like, all right, Nate, well, how are we going to get both sides of the family onto the dance floor at the same time? They don't even like the same types of music. So that's where I started creating reels about, you know, I would mix the Bee Gees over Selena, or I would, you know, make up some, I did one the other day, it was like an intocable over a house beat, right? And just kind of figuring out ways that I could show that I'm here to solve the problem that you have, right? And I just, then I started creating reels about how to get both sides of the family out on the dance floor at the same time and tips and tricks and things like that. And as I began doing that, right, it was like a snowball. It started small, but then the more content I created around that, defining my ideal client, speaking to my people, they came running, man. And, and it's funny because when I have these consultations with these couples, it's like I'm speaking to the same person over and over and over again because all of them have the same concerns. And that's when you know that you figured out your ideal client. So when I was thinking about expanding my team, I said, all right, well, if I'm going to be doing the majority of these bilingual weddings, I need DJs that are bilingual. So every single DJ that's on my team is bilingual uh, because that's the majority of our weddings, you know, out of the over 200 that we did last year, I'd probably say like 180 of them were wanting someone that could speak, speak both English and Spanish. So there you have it, man, just figuring out who your people are, creating content around that, and then it's going to resonate with them and they're going to come running, man. So there you have it. That's how I've gone from having zero gigs to well over 200 in 2024. And those are just some of my thoughts, man, of how you can do the same. So here again are the three strategies that you can implement today to really up your game. Number one, be kind to people, man. You're going to realize that so many doors are going to open up for you when you are nice to people. Number two, content is key. Like I said earlier, if your content is good, bro, you can charge whatever you want. So stop overthinking it. Get out there. Start creating. And if you need help with it, let me know. Hit me up. Drop a comment. I'll be more than happy to uh, help out however I can. And number three, figuring out your ideal client. Who are the couples that you want to work with? And start creating content around that. So Go out, apply those three strategies, man. Let me know how it goes for you. Drop down in the comments. Maybe if I miss something or you want to add on to any of the, those points, let me know down below and uh, I'll respond to everybody that I can, all right? But if you haven't done so, if you're new around here, follow me on Instagram, DJ Nate Acosta. Stick around, check out the channel. We have a ton of other videos on here. Really, the majority of it's gig logs, but I figured, hey, man, 
I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to give some game today. So again, guys, I hope you guys found that beneficial. I'll see you guys on the next one. Until next time, Nate Acosta, I'm out of here.